All right, I have here um, some photographs on a website of uh, ancient um, Yazidi if you'd like to call it a temple, if you'd like to call it a sanctuary, um, that's not the case, but I just like to get some things pointed out over here that the Yazidis, they have almost pyramid shaped like uh, domes on top of um, their buildings. Now, as I've mentioned that the Yazidi, Yazidis are of the ancient uh, tribals, um, you know, obviously they're as children of the sun, men of the sun, they are very much connected to the Armenians. Same race, same bloodline, same, okay? Now, prior to Armenians becoming a Christian entity, nation as a whole, we were so-called um, pagans, okay? Um, which is what the Yazidis... Anyways, it doesn't really matter. That's what people see them as, whatever, right? Okay, but I'd like to show you something. Now, if you look at the Armenian churches, look at the top. Do the church, the domes, not look like the Yazidis? You see the two? See that? You see the two and the two? See the dome, the top? This is the Holy Cross Church on the Akhtamar Island in what is now known as Turkey, Western Armenia at the time. Okay, these are all Armenian churches. Do they not look as of the same branch? Now, all the ancient Armenian churches in Western Armenia as well as Eastern Armenia, now known as Armenia. Um, this is the Ani church. It kind of appears a little dark, but... Um, they were built on top of the old temp Armenian temples, okay? Some of them were known as, they were just, the Armenians now, they just call them pagan temples or Zoroastrian temples. But really, really, it was of the branch of the Yazidi. Okay, again, Yazidi is just the name of the modern religion from... Uh, when I say modern, I don't mean modern like 200 years or a thousand years. It's just, um, it became a religion when one of the sheikhs, Sheikh Adi, formed it as a religion, okay? This is the interior of an Armenian church in Etchmiadzin. We got the mandalas, the dome. The geometrical shapes. So, this is on a website, and I want to do some reading for you because there's some stuff I'd like to share on this page. Some things that may or may not help you. I feel it will help you because if you're trying to get to know me in my life and your connection to me, then it will help you because of understanding um, certain things, okay, about me. I'd like to read just um, what it says. I'm going to read the entire website. This is on angelfire.com slash empire slash serpentis666 slash yezidis.html, okay? I don't know who the author is. I don't think I care. But I'm just going to share, whether I believe in this or not, I'm going to share what it says. There have been many conflicting articles concerning the Yazidi devil worshippers of Iraq. 
I don't consider them as devil worshippers. This is me talking. Um, I believe that which has created the term devil was the Christian and Islamic religions. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, okay. So the Yazidi people originally came from the southern Iraq and migrated north to Mount Lalish. Now, this is one concept of understanding where the Yazidis have come from. It is also another story that the Yazidis come from Western Armenia, um, the Anatolian regions. And it is also believed that different families of the Yazidi people, the Armenoid people, the Aryan race, um, migrated um, or immigrated both both areas or lived in both areas at the same time okay um, it is believed they are descendants of the Assyrians who sought refuge after the fall of Nineveh in 212 BCE like I said I'm not saying I believe this I'm not saying it's wrong I'm just reading it to you okay let's hold this up this is important that I'm going to show you now. Eridu, also known as Enkidu, was an ancient city in southern Iraq. This was Father Satan's Enki's city. If you know anything about the Sumerian uh, pantheon, Enki was the god of um, magic, waters, rivers, um civilization, so on and so forth. Family bloodline of uh, Astarte. The valley of Batan el Rul, which is right over the buried ancient city, is now known as the Devil's Hole and Belly of the Beast. The Jordanians and many others consider it to be haunted. Demons have been seen by many who have spent the night there. Mostly soldiers in Bivouac camps, those who have been there for any length of time, claim it has a powerful energy which the followers of Judeo-Christian Muslim programs label as evil. Yeah, that's right. Only they label as evil. Those who have spent the night there also claim the entire area is bathed in a strange bluish-gray light. Apparitions, did I even read that right, are also seen. The above information was taken from the book Psychic Warrior by David Morehouse. The author was a U.S. Army soldier who was hit in the head by mortar shell while camping with his platoon in that valley and experienced psychic phenomena and abilities he never had before the incident. He was eventually assigned to the U.S. Army Psychic Warfare Department. On that note, I get emails left, right, and center for so many years that all these psychic departments and companies want me to work for them, and I don't respond to any of them because it's like, which one? Overwhelming amount. And with all due respect, thank you, but I have my own stuff to take care of. <laughs> Iraq has many ancient artifacts and evidence of Satan. Mount Lalesh is near the ancient Assyrian city of Nineveh, and along a 300-mile stretch are the Ziaras, the Seven Towers of Satan, with a center tower on Mount Lalish. The Seven Towers, or powerhouses, a white cone-shaped structure with bright rays flashing from its pinnacle. I don't know about you people, but going back to those Christian churches in Armenia, remember what it's saying. A high, white, cone-shaped structure with bright rays flashing from its pinnacle. Go back. 300-mile stretch are the Ziaras, the seven towers of Satan, with the center tower on Mount Blalish. The seven towers or powerhouses, a white, cone-shaped structure with bright rays flashing from its pinnacle. Seven towers, the towers of Satan. Six of them, trapezoidal in form trapezoidal in form and one the center on Mount Lale shaped like a sharp fluted point that's written by the satanic rituals by Anton LaVey 
I'm not saying I'm a fan of him, but I've had to study his work. The above excerpt is also an allegory as a center is the odd one out, the heart chakra. It does have power, but not the power of the strongest chakra of the soul. The 666 chakra of the sun. Apparently not. Okay. The powers of the heart chakra are minimum. Now that I don't agree with. That is BS. That is why the enemy is always touting in the mainstream books and in the new age dogma out there that is re readily available to the public. That's not... Uh, no. Listen. If the heart chakra wasn't the most powerful... Um, this entire earth would have exploded a long fucking time ago, okay? If your aspect and idea of the soul 666 chakra of the sun is the most, I'm not saying it's not powerful, but if it was the most, that power aligned on each tower of the so-called demonic forces that these people are talking about and these religions are bringing and raping these women and children... This planet would not be able to consist and move forward and to still give you life force. This planet has always been on living on the heart chakra stream. But it is these guys that are bringing it lower to that chakra of the sun. Okay? So when they say sun, they're talking about the, the tummy, the, the Manipura chakra. Okay. Um which is, you know. Anyways, I don't care if you agree with me or not. I'm just sharing what I know. Each tower is topped by brilliant heliographic reflector and was intended to serve as a powerhouse from where a satanic Yazidi priest could beam his will to influence events in the world. The Yazidis have often been described as a secretive people who are not permitted to re reveal their religion to outsiders. So, if that's the case, if Yazidis are secretive people, what makes you think this shit that these people are writing, these Americans, these Englishmen, these so-called prophets, whether you believe you're a prophet of Satanism or um, Christianity or Islam... Or you're just an atheist that is just trying to understand what the fuck is going on. What makes you think these understandings is going to be 100% the same? Okay? Um, if I write something, if I write something, if I know something in Armenian and I try to translate it, no matter how well I try to translate it, it's not going to come out the same in English. Okay? It's just not. So what makes you think this is the, this, what these people say about the Yazidi religion is even accurate? And they even say there there is no dogma in the Yazidi religion. There is no commandments. It's just, it's all orally passed. And with orally passed in the Kurdish language, and you translate it to English, it's not going to be the same fucking thing. Humans are so gullible. It's amazing. They keep their real beliefs hidden. Modern Yazidism has changed somewhat from the old ways due to the outside interference. The Yazidi people have been severely persecuted and are very suspicious of outsiders. It is obvious their doctrines have been altered to conform to Christian beliefs, as in the Kuret al-Yazid. Satan dictates he is a god, and in other places it reads he is an archangel. Yeah, because it's people such as the, uh, <laughs> the thieves who try to change things, no? Have power over the people. Satan dictated the Al-Jilwa directed directly to the Yazidi prophet Sheikh Adi in the 12th century. The Al-Jilwa is the most important doctrine in Satanism and every Satanist should be familiar with its teachings. I asked Satan, whoever this person is, apparently spoke to Satan, if the Al-Jilwa was from him, and he confirmed it was. All right. But stated that the Muslims altered some of the Yazidi doctrines. 
Now, to ever who, whoever wrote them of the Yazidi doctrines. Now, to ever who, whoever wrote this, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just uh, sharing. Uh, whether people agree with it, whether they understand it, whether they accept it, even the reasons as to why I'm sharing it, whether they accept it or understand it or not, I'm sharing it because it's just another form of awakening people that need to get to know what the fuck is happening, okay? And how bullshit these religions are. I'm not talking about the Yazidis, I'm talking about these Abrahamic faiths, okay? The Yazidis have been victims of mass murder and genocide at the hands of others, mainly those of the Christian and Muslim religions. In the year 1415 CE, Muslims desecrated and burned the tomb of Sheikh Adi, ransacking his grave and removing his bones and burning them in front of the Yazidis. Some of the Yazidi multitude, they took as prisoners and made slaves of them. The others they murdered. Badr al-Din further ordered the execution of the 200 members of the sect and had Sheikh Adi's bones disinterred and burned. So if that's the case, what makes you think all this devil-worshipping thing about the Yazidis is accurate? In 1892, Farik Omar Pasha invited several Yazidi chiefs to Mosul. His agenda was to collect 20 years of back taxes and to try to convert them to Islam. A few Christians were present at the meeting. He began to tell them that if they would give up their devil worship, they would be rewarded with high place and rank and would be please the great Allah and would please the great Allah. When they refused to answer, Farik threw them into prison, marched on their village, and slew about 500 of them. Most Yazidis are illiterate, and few doctrines have been passed down from generation to generation by word of mouth. Okay, so at least that's pretty, you know, truthful. In order to avoid persecution, the Yazidi people have purposely deceived outsiders concerning their beliefs and doctrines. This explains why there are so many conflicting accounts of their faith. Yeah, because everyone else is writing it. It's like someone else taking my life story and writing my fucking book. How can you write my own book when you are not me? You are not my emotions. You are not my life experiences. You are not experiencing my life, my truth, my emotions, my fears, my strengths. That makes no sense. The Yazidis have very few scriptures. In the al Jilwa, Satan instructs, I lead to the straight path without a book. Melek Taos taught first by oral tradition and secondly by this book, Jilwe. The Yazidi people are forbidden to say the name Shaitan. They refer to Satan as Melek Taos. Melek means king. He is known as a peacock angel because of his beauty and pride. He is the proud one and ruler of the earth. He is a god of light rather than of darkness and is concerned with the destinies of the world. The Yazidis represent Satan by both the peacock and the snake. The peacock represents the beauty of the worshipped god and the snake represents his wisdom because he is both beautiful and wise. Their holy relic is the copper sanjak, an image of the peacock. The Yazidis play the flute and the tambourine at their festivals and dance, a worship which led to every excess of debauchery and lust. I don't know about you, but if you come to the United States, there's lust everywhere. <laughs> the Jalwa and the Resh are the authentic holy scriptures of the Yazidis. I'm just having coffee. The Yazidis not only acknowledge the loss of many copies of their scriptures, but also Sheikh Haider's recording of the Book of Resh. The latter, no doubt, the Resh scripture was set down from memory. The Yazidis indeed avoid mentioning the very name Satan or any of his attributes and have kept themselves aloof for centuries. Their books are a mystery. Yeah, because it's their fucking book. It's their story. It's their bloodline. It's their power that has been passed on to them. It's their tribe. If you are not initiated into this group, if you are not of this group, 
you will never understand. So people are jealous. So what do they do? They rape and steal their brides, their women, their children, and they still don't fucking understand. What have you gained? Rapists, what have you gained? Other than raping your own identity and raping your own minds. You rape for what? 10, 20 minutes? But overall, you rape yourself. What do you gain by raping? Do you know how many men I've met who have raped? And in return have been raped? Physically as well? They don't talk about that though. You do get what you put out. The Yazidis sometimes use the name Ankar for Satan and the name Angar Manu Manu for Ariman in uh, Zoroastrianism. Ugh, I can't even say it. Zoroastrianism. <laughs> the Mishaf scripture, Resh Black, the Yazidis believe was written by Sheikh Hassan al Basri, has been called black because of the word Satan is covered in it. Okay, but da da da. Okay. The Yazidis also have a reputation for being a debt in black magic now one thing that i want to show you is give me a second if i go back i want to show you something about enki Well, there's a few things I want to show you. I'm going to search Eridu. Okay. Then I'm going to search Enkidu. Then I'm going to search Enki. Then I'm going to search Ararat. Which, by the way, um, does not the Yazidi um, temples and such, does it not resemble Mount Ararat? You see that? You see that? Remember, Noah's Ark landed on a mountain called Ararat between two mountains. If you open up your Bibles, it says Mount Ararat Armenia, right? Where life began. And the Yazidis, temples and structures, that seven demons, whatever you want to fucking call it, is shaped exactly like the top of this. Now I want to search... Urartu. I'm going to open all this up and show you some stuff, okay, guys? And Erebuni. Remember what I showed you? The Erebuni? Or Yerebuni fortress? It's all the same entity and same people running it, okay? Erebuni Fortress. Also known as Arin Bert, meaning the Fortress of Blood, is an Urartu, Urartian fortified city located in Yerevan, Armenia. Above sea level, it was one of the several fortresses built along the northern Urartian border. I can't even say that word either. Like, my language is not very good. <laughs> Erebuni at the time of its founding meant capture, conquest, or victory. Okay? From Proto-Indo-European, to be, to grow. Sanskrit, 
world. Anyways. From the kingdom of Urartu. 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 Eridu. So this is in Iraq, where Enki's temple was at. That's so-called Mesopotamia. See, that's Enki. In Sumerian mythology, Eridu was originally the home of Enki, who was considered to have founded the city. Okay? So, it's very much connected to the, uh, right? The Urartu, the kingdom of Urartu, Eridu, Urartu. Pay attention. Did you not see the arrows on the Sumerian god? Let's click on Enkidu. Enki's creation. I don't know if I want to read all this. It's not very important because... I just want you to pay attention to these names and how these gods, the pictures, are depicted very similar. All right. Um, There's that other thing that I wanted to show you too that, um, anyways, Eridu was long considered the earliest city in southern Mesopotamia and is still today argued to be the oldest city in the world. Eridu was the southernmost of a conglomeration of Sumerian cities that grew around the temples, almost in sight of one another. These buildings were made of mud brick and built on top of one another. With the temples growing upward, the largest city was built in Sumerian mythology. Eridu was originally the home of Enki, later known by the Akkadians as Ea, who was considered to have founded the, his city. His temple was called Iapsu, as Enki was believed to live in Apsu, an aquifer, an aquifer from which all of life was believed to stem. Now I want to go back. I kind of lost the page. Eridu is named as a city of the first kings. Ah. I want to go to that. Um... Guys, sorry. I've cleaned the screen. It's just, uh, it's staying. I don't know what the hell that is. It's from my cleaner. Uh, maybe I didn't clean it right. Ah. The stories of Inanna, goddess of Uruk, which is also associated with Urartu. Describe, because it's the same fucking, <laughs> you know, describe how she had to go to Eridu. In order to receive the gifts of civilization. Pay attention. At first Enki the god of Eridu. Attempted to retrieve these sources of his power. But later willingly accepted that. Uruk now was the center of the land. This seems to be mythical. Reference to the transfer of power northward. Babylonian texts talk of the foundation of Eridu. By the god Marduk. As the first city. The holy city. The dwelling of their other gods as the light. In the court of Assyria, special physicians trained in the ancient lore of Eridu, far to the south, foretold the course of sickness from signs and portents on the patient's body and offered the appropriate incantations and magical resources as cures. Okay. Now goodbye to this now let's go on urartu okay kingdom of urartu which are armenians 
which are Sumerians, which are Yazidis, which are Indo-Europeans. Kingdom of Ararat was in our age kingdom centered on Lake Van in the Armenian highlands. Strictly speaking, Urartu is a, Sur a Syrian term for a geographical region, while Kingdom of Urartu are terms used in Urartian speaking Iron Age states that arose in the region. The landscape corresponds to the mountainous plateau between Anatolia, Mesopotamia, the Iranian plateau, and the Caucasus mountains, later known as the Armenian highlands. Remember, these are all tribes of the Armenian people. Just fucking go back to the Yazidi temple, the, the domes, man. It is a built foundation of the Mount Ararat mountains. The kingdom rose to power in the mid 9th century BC, but was conquered by the Medes and then, okay, out of the army. Okay, so the god Haldi, which is a uh, Haig, which is Orion or Orion, however you want to say it. Okay, now, I want to go back to that temple in Iraq. Wow, this video is over 30 minutes. Um, oh, wait, let's go to Ararat. No, this is the movie. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's not important. Um... Wait a second. Click here. Um. All right. It was Wait one second. Okay, this is what I wanted. Batan el Ghul. Now, this is the so-called... Do you see how it looks like Mount Ararat? Oh, what happened here? The... This pyramid? Or the fucking temple domes? So, this is a so-called site of the area where it's apparently haunted. And there's demons. Which does not fucking surprise me if you want to call it a demon, if you want to call it entities. Um, all I want to tell you is that these entities are with me. They have always been with me and they will remain with me. This is part of my purpose. Uh, for those mediums, those who feel that they have to do seances to get rid of my influence and energy. These are the entities that you are seeing and feeling. I just thought I'd let you know. I'd leave you with um, some enlightenment and some closure if that helps. Maybe it's not closure. Maybe it's just enlightenment and awareness. But this is what you're dealing with, okay? So if this helps you by getting to know me, why I'm here, what the fuck is happening, the influences, and how difficult it is to get rid of it, um, good luck. But... If the heart chakra isn't so powerful, then how is it that I'm balancing all this? Okay. Um, yeah. Mm, that's all I wanted to share, so... Like I said, if this helped, I'm glad. If not, I just wanted to share it. Thank you.